Hey guys, and welcome to Toby Talks Tech. I'm Toby, and today we're going to talk some tech. In the last tutorial, we went totally hardcore. We got all set up with Node.js, Visual Studio Code, and ConEMU if you're on Windows. And we wrote our first ever Node.js program. In this tutorial, we're going to take it one step further and turn our really simplistic Node application into a very simple Node web server that we can then visit and view in our browser. One of the great things of the Node.js community is that there's a lot of pre-existing packages and libraries out there online that people have already built that you can just download and include in your own application. One of those packages is called Express. Express is a lightweight web server written in Node.js. It is really well documented, it's easy to download and it's easy to use and with so much easy this tutorial is also going to be easy. I will however assume that you have watched the previous parts in this series and you do understand how the internet works and how clients and servers interact with one another and you are all set up with Node and you've written your first ever Node program. But now, before I talk your ears off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here is where we left off in the last part of the tutorial. All we have is our two files, our index.js and our package.json file. And by the way, if you're jumping in halfway through, I'm going to make all of the source code available to download in the description of the video on every single part of this series. So you can simply go there and download it if you don't want to type it up by hand. So remember, all we had was a simple note application that we could run with npm start. And all it really does is print out hello note. Now, that's really awesome and exciting, but if you remember, a web server from the first part is a machine that continuously runs a process that can handle incoming requests. So get requests come to the server at any point in time. The server will handle it, it'll process it and then reply with a response. Now, right now our node application just runs once and finishes. So this has nothing to do with the web server. One of the really exciting, but sometimes also slightly terrifying aspects of the Node.js community is that there's a huge amount of pre-built packages and libraries available that you can download using NPM, the Node Package Manager, to use in your application. There are quite a number of different lightweight web servers available as NPM packages, as those NPM libraries are called. So there's things like Express and Harpy. Um, for this tutorial, we are going to use Express. And in order to install an NPM package in your application, you have to make sure that you're in the directory where your package JSON file is, which is, remember, the file that defines the structure of your project. And in here, we can simply type NPM space install space and then the name of the package we want to install the name of the package for our web server is express space and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put dash dash save and what this is going to do before i execute this let's return to visual studio code and in our package json here remember this is all the specification for our project however we're now installing express which means our application is going to depend on the express package being available if we don't save this dependency, if we send this code to someone else or we deploy it to AWS, AWS won't know that it needs to install this express package. Therefore, on the command line, we need to specify dash dash save. And I'm going to show you in a second what that will do. But let's execute that for now. And this will download and install the express package from the NPM repository into our local project. Now, here are all the bits and pieces that got downloaded as part of the express package. And because we specified dash dash save, if we now go back to our package JSON file, you will see in the package JSON file, there's now a dependencies property. And the dependencies property specifies express version 4.14.0 or up. So this little hat defines anything this or above. So if there's a newer version that comes out and someone installs the application, they will get the newer version. Personally, I highly recommend taking this hat off because what sometimes happens is someone builds an application with a dependency that says anything higher than this version, a new version gets released that doesn't quite work the way the old one did, someone installed the application and everything falls apart. So by specifying the exact version of the package you're depending on, you're making the application more stable and you can upgrade this manually when you're ready to deal with any potentially breaking changes. Let's save our package JSON file. And over on the left hand side, uh, I'm actually going to collapse these open editors. I'm not a big fan of this particular tab. In our part three, which is my current folder where I've got everything in folder, we now have a node modules folder. And if you expand this, there's 
a whole bunch of stuff that get installed in here. And these are all the packages for Express itself. So there's Express in here. This is the actual Express package. And all of the other bits and pieces are modules that Express itself depends on or the dependency of dependencies depend on. So it pulls everything in it needs to run the Express NPM package. Now, this can sometimes get in the way, especially when you're doing search, because search will search through everything you have in here. So you can highly customize Visual Studio Code. And one thing I like to do, come up into Files, Preferences, and let's open the User Settings. And over here on the right-hand side, you can actually customize settings. And here on the left, so these ones are the default settings, and you can actually expand all of these. And you can see all of these properties. You can modify all of them, but don't modify them here on the left. Actually override them in this settings JSON on the right. So what I am going to do is I am going to go double quote, search, and the cool thing with Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna brag about Visual Studio Code a little bit. I didn't write it, but I just really love it. There's so many cool things. Um, it auto-completes a whole lot of things for you. It even auto-completes JavaScript. So in your settings JSON, you will find search.exclude when you start typing search. So let's go search exclude. Ah, it, it, it figured out I'm writing a node project. It already automatically excluded anything in a node modules folder and anything under Bauer components. Now, the other thing I want to also do, if I save this, my node modules folder is still visible. It will be get excluded from any searches I do, but it's still visible. And personally, I like to hide it altogether because there's hardly ever a case when I dig into this and dig through the source code. So the other thing I'm going to do in my settings JSON on the right hand side, let's configure another property. And this one is going to be files.exclude. And I'm also going to exclude yeah, default git, svn, hd, ds store, depending on which operating system you're on. I'm going to leave all of those in, but I'm going to add another one. And that is going to be star star forward slash node modules. Set that to true. And this will now also exclude all of those files from my left side the moment I save it. So let's save this. And shwoop, node modules folder is gone. I can close this file and let's close the default settings. So we're returning to our normal project. And it's just a little bit neater. It's gonna hide the node modules folder from the Explorer and my search. So everything is just a little bit nicer to use. So now we've installed Express, great. However, our index.js file, which contains the source code for our program, has absolutely nothing in it. It'll still just write out a console log if we do npm start. We now need to include and set up the Express npm package to essentially start up a server and Again, remember a server is an ongoing process that can handle incoming requests and send out responses. Let's return once again to Visual Studio Code. Let's delete everything that is in here and let's start writing a really, really lightweight Node.js web server. One thing, if you're getting into code, you need to comment your code. Now, there are different philosophies around how to comment your code. I'm not going to go into too much about how much is too much, how little is too little. I like to be fairly verbose, or at least I like to kind of block out certain things. So at the very top, I'm going to place a comment. Dependencies, no, depend, dependencies. Let's spell that correctly. And here I'm just going to add all of my dependency. And one of the dependencies, remember, we just installed Express as a dependency for our project. What I'm going to type is I'm going to type const, which defines a constant variable that can't be changed. Express equals, and then I'm going to go require, and in single quotes, because again, JavaScript, single quotes, express. Now what this is going to do, require essentially includes a module and with npm install, we just installed the express module. So we now need to include the express module. We're requiring it and we're assigning it to an express variable. So we can now use the variable express to interact with the express module. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a few local variables that I can use. And one of the most useful ones is you need to set up the port that your web server will be running on. Now it gets a little bit more technical, essentially, any web request you do to a server by default will use port 80. Ports are like doors. Imagine your web server is a house and it's got lots of entry doors and every port is a different door that might lead to somewhere else. Now, processes can't share doors. If you already have a process running on a door, like on port 80, there's already something responding and listening to port 80, you can't have another process running on port 80. Another example, let's go quickly to Google. Now, google.com, there's nothing specified, but I can specify a port. I can say, go to google.com, colon, 80. This means to access www.google.com.au at port 80. Now, one of the web addresses we are going to use, we are going to use localhost. 
localhost is a special name that is reserved for your own machine. When you say localhost, it means in the web, rather than going out to the internet, localhost is the name for your local machine. So when you say localhost, it'll try to look up the name of what is localhost using DNS, and that will actually point back at your own machine. So if you have a web server running on port 80 on your local machine, localhost will get you there. Now, if I go to localhost, you will see internet information services, and that is because I have IIS, which is Microsoft's version of a web server already running on my machine and it is running on port 80. So if I go localhost colon 80 and hit enter, it'll actually drop the 80 off because it, it's just the default, it's just the assumed default. So what this means, however, is that my web server, my local web server, door 80, so port 80 is already in use and I cannot use it. I'm going to have to use a slightly different port. So now let's return to our Visual Studio Code project and specify a port. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to type const port because I don't want to change this ever unless my server gets restarted. And I'm going to type process.env.port and port all capitals or, and this here, these two vertical bars is an or, 8080. What this is going to do is if my node application is running in an environment where I have already got a port specified, which is going to happen once we deploy this into AWS, it's going to use that port because in that instance, we want to run it on port 80 once it's in the cloud. But for my local instance, I'm going to run it on port 8080, which is kind of like an alternative web port that gets used quite a lot. So we're just going to have either whatever is already specified in the environment or port 8080 assigned to this variable. Next, let's actually start up our server. And the way to do this is to use the express module to create a web application. For that, let's go var app, so a new variable called app. And to that, we are going to assign express open and close round brackets and a semicolon at the end. So we're ex essentially executing, we're calling the function of express, which is our express module. And this is going to create a new app for us, a new web server application. Now, that's great, but we haven't started the web server yet. We have it available, but if we were to run this, it wouldn't do anything at all. We need to now start the application, but we also need to tell it what to actually respond to. Remember, in our example, we are performing a GET request. There's a GET request coming into our server, and the server needs to know that this is a valid request, and I need to process it and reply with something useful. So let's return to Visual Studio Code, and now let's specify a get request on the root of our server. For that, you can go app.get. And yes, this is the get that we actually performing. So someone is accessing the website, they're trying to get information. So it's a get request, but more on HTTP later. So we're performing a get request, open round bracket, and then in strings go forward slash. So this is essentially the root of our web application gets hit. And then in here, now, Follow me on this. This is a little bit cryptic when you first see it. Open round brackets. Rec, which is request, but it gets abbreviated so much that I'm going to follow that convention. Comma, res for response. Again, I'm just following convention and it's really easy to read once you get used to it. Close the round bracket and then equals right arrow, meaning I'm calling, this is a function. I'm essentially specifying a function that has two parameters, a request and a response. And I'm going to write the function body in braces or I think they're called curly braces. So in here, I'm now going to specify a response. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return. And technically, you don't need to return, but I do it just to keep it clean. Res, so response, response is an object, and we can send data back from the server. So I'm going to go response dot send. And yes, this is literally send information back to the client application. So this is the process in here that will send the information back to whoever is accessing this URL or this entry point with the GET request. So GET comes in, we're processing it, and we're now sending a response back. And we're specifying that with response send. And in here, for now, let's simply type hello node server, semicolon at the end, and at the end of these round brackets as well, let's make a semicolon so that we finish off every single statement in JavaScript with a semicolon. So we're now, whenever someone does a GET request on the root of our web server, we're going to return hello node server. Just as plain text for now, we're going to tweak that in a second. And now I'm almost out of breath, but we still need to start up our application server. Remember how I talked you ear off about how ports can't be shared and we need to have an application that actually listens to a port? 
Now, our web server process needs to specify a port and it needs to say, I need to listen to something. I need to wait and listen because again, the web server runs continuously. It just waits and listens for incoming requests on a specific port or through a specific door, if you will, and then responds. So in our code, what we have to do is we have to go app dot listen. And this is literally listen to a port and the port we want to use, we have specified here so we can use this variable, this port variable, which again will be whatever the environment specifies or 8080 in our case, comma. And then I'm going to have an open round and a closed round brackets without anything in it. So that's an empty parameter list. I'm just going to call a function again. So again, this, this is essentially the same as writing function nothing and then open body. It's just it's just a more modern way of writing it. And once you get used to it, it really sticks. I really like this format. It's quite nice, but there are a few gotchas. Again, a topic for another tutorial. So not now. For now, all I want to do is I'm simply going to write console.log and then saying server running at port in single quotation marks plus port. Maybe I'll go another plus and then in single quotes dot 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 to indicate that this is an ongoing process and a semicolon at the very end. So now we're going to essentially start up the application server to listen on port 80. And as it starts up, so this is essentially just a callback that happens once the server starts, the server will simply spit out server running at port 80 or 8080 or whichever port it's actually running on, on the console. So we know that it's running. And then you have a local server running on your machine that you can access with your web browser. So now let's save this file. Again, there's little dots. So save the file index.js and hoping that everything is all right, let's return to conemu and let's simply type npm space start. And remember, this is going to execute node index.js and index.js contains our server. So let's return to conemu and npm start. Let's hit enter, hold your breath. And there's our console output server running at port 80. And you notice that I haven't returned to the command line. It's, it's still running. This process is still running. And now the cool thing is I can go into my browser and as I explained, port 80 is already hogged up by IIS. But if you remember, conemu actually told us that the server is running at port 8080. So in our web browser, in order to access our locally running web server that we have written in Node.js, hang on here, this is actually pretty exciting. If you've never written a web application, go colon 8080, hit enter. And there you go, we have now this, this is the response from your local server. So what is actually happening is you're accessing localhost 8080. DNS will look that up. It'll say, oh, localhost. Yeah, I know what that is. That is your own computer. So it routes the GET request to your local machine at port 8080, which is where we have our Node.js web server running. That web server then within our application, we have specified if a GET request comes in, we're responding with hello node server. So this data, gets sent back out. Well, doesn't really go through the internet because there's no reason, but it'll go out. It'll come back to your browser with a response and that contains your response data. So we're now seeing hello node server. Now this may not seem terribly exciting to you, but we just wrote our very first web server using Node.js and we're running it on our local computer. There are still a few small things that we should set up to make our development environment a little bit more comfortable, like automatically watching for changes and restarting the server and giving this a little bit more of a pretty URL. So, you know, we're feeling all comfortable and whatnot. But because this tutorial is starting to get a little bit too long, I'm going to leave that for the next video. And then after that, we're going to deep dive into the code. And that's all there is to it. You've just written and deployed your first web application in Node.js. Straight to prod. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more nerdy content. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.